This guy was referred to me with neurofibromatosis, increasing arm pain and girth. There must be a, a neurofibroma in there. Maybe it's undergoing malignant degeneration. Let's biopsy this. Would you, would you please help arrange for that? And so I looked at some of the imaging studies, and you can see this. He's got kind of a big arm there. It's hard to say what's going on. But let's look at some of the imaging studies. Well, the bone is a little scalloped there, and boy, what is going on in the arm here? And certainly you can see that phase encoding artifact ghosting there. That's no tumor. There's a lot of blood moving in there. So this guy has an AVM that's involving the muscle with lots and lots of high flow. So I brought him in and talked to him about doing an angiogram, and I said, you know, you've been carrying the diagnosis of neurofibromatosis for years. Do, do you have any cafe LA spots? And he said, yes, I do. I said, where are they? And there, he pointed down to his private parts. And I got very interested in this, and I picked up the phone, and I do what I do when I feel really stupid. I pick up the phone, and I call Alona. I said, Alona, here's what I got. And she said to me, does he have a big head? Yeah, and I looked over, and sure enough, he's got a big head, and so he has. Um, well, he has what's now called P10 hamartoma syndrome. So these are patients who have P10 mutations, uh, germline P10 mutations. They have macrocephaly, penile freckling in the males, and they can get different kinds of vasco malformations, but primarily AVMs often add mixed with a little bit of fat, actually. There are arterial venous shunts that have very large draining varices, and they tend to involve muscle. So they're not something that you could just cut out. My goal here, because we can't cure this, is to palliate his pain, um, and which I was able to do from a trans-arterial approach. You can see accessing uh, the feeding artery to the AVM, and I think I used uh, liquid adhesive glue here, and that's the before and that's the after, and so we're better off with that, and we've been able to control his pain even though we haven't cured his syndrome or his AVM, and that's one of the judgments we made when we first saw him. So the lesson here is don't assume that the question being asked of you is the right one, and don't, certainly don't assume that the diagnosis is correct, and in this case, we started finding more and more the more we looked. And I, I think one of the things that's great about our clinic um, that and it's a culture that I think we've fostered of, it's, it's kind of of mindfulness and openness, is that when we walk in the room, we never know what we're going to see. And we have diagnosed quite a number of patients with this syndrome just by sort of having a sense that being open to, to it and not locking in right away on a diagnosis and like, we ought to just go in there and diagnose and treat. Um, and maybe that's because we're not seeing large numbers of patients at each visit, but, but really trying to, to think, um, pull ourselves back a little bit and look at the bigger picture.